this video is going to focus on five review questions which you are seeing right here and the type is a little small but no need to worry we will zoom in on each of these for this first one you are to evaluate this expression and in order to evaluate this expression you're going to need to know f of x which we already have and then f of x plus h which we don't have so let's figure that part out first this is f of x only difference is, is that instead of x I've taken them all out remember the idea behind this is whatever you plug in here goes into every other single variable since we need f of x plus h that means we're gonna plug in f of x plus h into every single space so that's f of x plus h now what we're going to do is we're going to take this whole thing here and we will substitute it for this entire part here and then f of x will be replaced by this entire quantity so essentially this is what you're looking at right here so you see that this first quantity was f of x plus h this guy so I'm putting this in brackets this is the whole group this is f of x from here you're just doing your regular algebra you'll want to foil this out don't just square the individual components distribute your five with this one note the negative in front which is why the brackets or parentheses is so important you'll want to minus x squared minus 5x and then plus 7 go ahead and collect your like terms and then just start reducing out or canceling out all the uh, opposite terms and that's what you'll wind up with from here you might be a bit confused like well, okay what do I do with this H underneath but keep in mind that each and every single one of these three terms are being divided by H so therefore all you gotta do is just split it up and then once you've done that just go ahead and reduce out if you finish correctly you should get 2x plus H plus 5 okay let's focus on 2a 2a says F times G of negative 1 what that really is saying is determine f of negative 1 and then multiply it to g of negative 1 now what f of negative 1 simply means this when you plug in negative 1 what do you get for the y value or in other words this so you know the x coordinates negative 1 what's the y coordinate well we want to know that for both the f and the g so let's first worry about when f when an x is negative 1 for graph f right here this is the graph for y equals f of x when we go across to negative one you'll see that the point is located up there okay my pointer isn't very precise so put a red dot there so what is the y coordinate for that we know the x coordinate is negative one so therefore the y coordinates three now do the same thing also for g when x is negative one you'll notice that g is down here the y value for that is negative 2. So that's really it. All you got to do now is just do the arithmetic. 3 times negative 2. And that's all there is to it. Part B. F of g of negative 1, what this translates into is this essentially. So what you need to find is you need to find what g of negative 1 is first so look at your graph on your graph what that means is that when x is negative 1 this is where the point is on the g graph so in other words the y value for that is negative 2 in other words the coordinates are negative 1 comma negative 2 so what that means for you now is you need to do f of negative 2 so on your graph again you want to trace out this time the x value being negative 2 but we're looking up at the f graph this time so right here is the point so f of negative 2 what's the y coordinate and that's really it okay for the domain and range of f in fact let's look at the graph a little bit differently there we are now we can just concentrate on f 
When uh, looking at F here, since we're talking domain, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade in um, how far the graph extends from left to right. So essentially this portion here from left to right is how far this graph extends. Now since domain refers to the X values, then what you want to consider is, well, what values on the x-axis are we covering? And you can kind of see here, it's shaded in. It goes from here to here. So consider then, if that's the case, what part of the graph are we really looking at? So just block out everything except for what's on the x-axis. And you'll see how it spans. It spans from negative 3 to 2. Because of that, your domain will simply be that interval, negative 3 to 2. And that would complete that part for the domain. We use the same logic for the y values. For the y values, we see how far it spans from, uh, from north to south. So from top to bottom, it's occupying that portion of the graph. So then what you do is you say to yourself, self, what part of the y-axis is covered? Well, it's covered from here to here. Now this time I'm not going to blank out. Let's see if you can visualize this without having any part being obscured. You see that the extent of the y-values from negative 1 on the low end to positive 3 on the high end. So your interval, therefore, is just negative 1 to 3. And that is your answer for the range. Okay, for this transformation here, what we want to keep in mind is the fact that there's a negative in front of our x, but not a negative in front of the name of the function. Now, typically, we want to look for those negatives first because reflection is the very first consideration when it comes to doing these type of problems. If you're thinking, oh, I need to move this graph over, I need to shift it up, down, left, right, you're correct, but reflection comes first. And just as a general rule, it would probably make the problem easier if you did reflection first. If you have a negative in front of your x variable, that will affect a horizontal change in that the graph in this case g of x, which I have isolated, will simply flip horizontally. Now that doesn't mean through the horizontal axis, but rather the graph itself flips horizontally. All the x values, which are negative, become positive, and all the positive x values become negative. If you have a negative out in front of the whole thing, that's a vertical change. It just simply flips top to bottom and such. There's our reflection. Now as you can see, the original has been faded. But the new one, you will notice now, what was once positive has become negative. Whatever's negative has become positive. If you were actually to fold on this line and just kind of map across and trace over, you would see that this would be the mirror image. And now you worry about translation. For translation, that just simply means moving the whole graph. We're not going to flip or anything like that. Just shifting up, down, left, and right. Outside the parentheses here, what you see is what you get. If it says plus 3, you'll actually move the graph up 3 units. If you have something grouped in with x, that's going to affect a horizontal change. So what we do is this here, this group, take that group, set this equal to 0, solve for x, we get x equals positive 2, which means we take the graph and we shift it to the right two units. If you're wondering why we don't set this to 0, it's because if you do that, there will be no variable to solve for. I mean, you can't solve for y. There's no y there. So just take your graph again, move over two units, and then up three units. And that would be your solution. For this problem here, we're going to be using the point-slope formula to help us set up this problem. In order to use the point-slope formula, we're going to need to know the slope, and we're going to need to know the point. As you can see, in this case, we are given the point, the point being negative 3, 2. 
So let's go ahead and plug that in right now. Okay, all we're missing now is the slope. Now to get the slope, it would be nice if we had two points, but we don't. What we're instead told is that this line is perpendicular to another given line. So what we will do is we will determine the slope of this line first and then determine the perpendicular slope from there. So let's take this thing and write it in slope intercept form. Let us minus x from both sides and then we'll divide both sides by negative 6. Please keep in mind that in front of here there is a 1 that is normally not written so when you divide everything by negative 6 you get 1 over 6 and I'm leaving just that part in red with everything else being in black. The reason being is because everything else is unimportant. We care only about the slope. We do not care really about this intercept being negative 7. In fact, you didn't even have to calculate it. Now the perpendicular slope is based on this one except, well, we would want the reciprocal of 1 over 6. So that's positive 6 over 1. And then we switch the sign to the opposite sign. So if it's positive, we make it negative. So negative 6 is what we will use to plug into this part here for the point slope formula. At this point the problem kind of finishes itself. Go ahead and distribute that negative 6. And if you were to write this in slope intercept form you would add 2 to both sides to finish off the problem. And that's it for that one. Okay, to determine the inverse equation for this, we're going to use very similar steps for graphing. Let's first write this without the f of x notation. Okay, so what's the first step? Well, the first step that we want to do is we want to switch x and y. Specifically, your x, you just simply write y, and then your y, you simply write x. Now, occasionally, well, Normally you'd be finished, except we actually want an equation to f inverse of x equals, which basically means this. On this right-hand side, the only variable that should be here is x, because it's a function of x, not a function of y. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to solve for y. And then once we've done that, then we can write this notation here in front of it. Let's multiply out the denominator. And what that allows us to do, essentially, is eliminate this denominator here. Or rather, to be more correct, it reduces out. Distributing that x, this is what we get on the left. On the right-hand side, just 2y minus 7. I'm leaving the y's in yellow to kind of remind you that that's the letter we need to solve for. And what that means is this. That means on the left-hand side, we don't want x. We want that gone. On the right-hand side, we need to move this 2y over here to the left-hand side. So what we will do is we'll subtract those two terms from their respective sides. So we'll subtract x from the left-hand side and the right-hand side. These two are not like terms, so I'm leaving this guy over here by itself. And we will also subtract 2y from both sides. So what happens is this. This is gone this is gone from their respective sides. So on the right hand side it'll just be these two terms and on the left hand side it'll just be these two terms. The terms with y. Okay, now we're almost done. What I want to do now is again we want to solve for y and since we have two terms with y we're going to factor it out. And you'll see that factoring it out allows us here to divide out the rest of this. So the x minus 2 you'll divide both sides by x minus 2 and that will just leave us with the y and this goes away so then all we're left with really is this and that's really it all you gotta do is just swap out the y for the f inverse of x so just move that out of the way put this in its place That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.